coming into number 10, we have the Stanley Hotel. So the Stanley Hotel was the place that inspired Stephen King to write one of the most horrifying novels turned horrifying films of all time. The resort is in Colorado and built into the Rocky Mountains. The building has a rich history of paranormal goings on across the entire hotel, but in particular the fourth floor. The most haunted room is supposed to be room 217. This is the room where King stayed the night and was also said to have once been the site of an unfortunate explosion. This is what Stephen King said about the stay that inspired what is arguably his most famous novel. He said, I dreamt of my three year old son running through the corridors, looking back over his shoulder, eyes wide, screaming. He was being chased by a fire hose. I woke up with a tremendous jerk, sweating all over, within an inch of falling out of bed. I got up, I lit a cigarette, I sat in the chair looking out of the window at the Rockies, and and by the time the cigarette was done, I had the bones of my book firmly set in my mind. Stephen King for King, I love him. Also I will say, staff who frequent the concert hall at the hotel at night report hearing the whispered words, get out, which would deeply, deeply freak me out. Coming into number 9, we have the Taj Mahal Palace. Located in India, although not actually in the famous Taj Mahal, this hotel has a woesome backstory. Despite the Mumbai hotel being grand and beautiful, it is said that the French architect W. A. Chambers accidentally built it backwards and was so distraught that he ended up committing side by jumping from the fifth floor. Now according to a lot of first hand reports from staff at the lavish hotel, the architect still roams the halls at night. The hotel was also the site of a terror attack in 2008. At this point the hotel was seized and 31 people were killed there. The hotel was back up and running soon after as a symbol of strength and resilience, but the memory of the attacks live on. Coming into number 8 we have the Drovers Inn. Ah, Scotland, I dream of you always. I would stay anywhere in Scotland, even here. The Drovers Inn is located in Invernanan in Loch Lomond. The Drovers Inn dates back to the 1700s, a time when things were really kicking off in Scotland. The inn is the best kind of hotel because it's also a pub with just a small number of rooms so you can get nice and cosy with those ghosts, of which there are many. Room 6 is said to be plagued by mysterious orb lights. A ghostly child appears in a pink dress on the staircase and room 115 is haunted by a voyeur. It seems that a couple stayed in the room one night and were awoken by strange flashes. Thinking nothing of it, they went back to sleep. The next morning when they were packing up, they found their camera out of place. Weird. They didn't think too much of it until later when they went through the pictures and there were some creepy images of the couple sleeping. The pair were freaked out as the room was locked from the inside when they went to bed, but nonetheless they called the inn to report the goings on. Now the inn responded and said that no staff would have had access to the room and even if they had they couldn't enter if it was locked from the inside. Creepy, although I'd still stay there just to be in Scotland. I love Scotland. Coming into number 7 we have Hotel Galvez. I have always wanted to go to Texas, I've never been but I'm super keen, although honestly I'm keen to go everywhere and anywhere, but still Texas is high up. Anyway, Hotel Galvez is located in Galveston Island on the Gulf of Mexico and was built in 1911. Over 100 years later and the Queen of the Gulf is drawing in visitors, although it seems that some guests have never left. Rather than giving you a whole spiel like I usually would, I'm just going to read you a TripAdvisor review from a spooked guest. Here goes. The hotel is so full of history and the interior is very beautiful. I didn't realise that the Galvez was known for its ghostly visitors, nor was I a believer until now. My friend and I were walking the Galvez and my friend was calling out to Audra, a woman who hung herself in the hotel in the 1950s. Her room was 501 and we were staying a few rooms down. Anyway, we go to sleep that night and at around 5am I woke up and my hotel door is open and the latch is still on and I'm thinking, oh my god. We were intoxicated, so I guess we just left the door open. So I close the door and I go back to bed and I wake up at around 8am and I tell my friend that we left the door open last night, then I get out of bed and walk over to the door to show her how far it was, and to my amazement, the door kept closing all the way, it just wouldn't stay open. It's spring loaded, so I was confused. Anyway, that's my story of the Galvez. Blimey, this is what happens when you call upon spirits, I'm just saying. Coming into number 5 we have the Russell Hotel. If you hear a creak in the night at the Russell Hotel in Sydney, chances are there's a ghoul on the loose or lurking in the shadows. The Russell Hotel is no stranger to mysterious midnight moans and groans, but the most enduring legend is of a spirit of a sailor who roams the hotel, but most often causes trouble in room 8. 
Guests have seen him lurking over their bed, staring at them in the night. That's a no from me, sir. Back on your ship. Okay, but despite the ghosts and everything, you should actually stay here because it's one of the nicest and most beautiful places I've ever been in the world. Coming into number four, we have Fairmont Banff Springs. I went to the Fairmont Banff Springs earlier this year and it was absolutely breathtaking. The building dates back to 1888 and was a grand railway hotel. The building is a National Historic Site of Canada but it is teeming with ghosts and ghouls. It is said that a secret room was constructed during the original build which was only discovered when a fire broke out in 1926. Speaking of fire, some say a burning bride haunts the sweeping ballroom. The story goes that as she walks down a staircase lined with candles, her dress caught fire. In a panic, she tripped and fell, dying from a broken neck. Some say that her spirit haunts both the bridal suite and the ballroom where she can be seen dancing with flames licking her dress. Also reported it's the spectre of a bellman who haunts the ninth floor, and an apparition of a bartender, and get this, a headless bagpipe player. How that works? I mean, you go figure. The real deal here though is room 837. Legend has it that this is the room that a grisly murder took place in and that guests who stay here are awoken in the middle of the night by screaming. Bloody handprints have also been spotted on the room's mirror. On the upside though, I will once again reiterate that this is one of the nicest hotels in the world and it's absolutely stunning and there's a beautiful lobby dog called Bear. Bear. Coming into number three, we have the Langham. The Langham is a beautiful and very fancy hotel in London. Shout out to my former hometown. The luxury five star rooms come with a hefty price tag and some extra ghouls. Cools. The hotel opened in 1865 and was said to have been the suicide spot of a German prince who jumped from the fourth floor. He can still be seen at the window he once fell from. A doctor involved in a murder-suicide can also be found pacing the halls and none other than Emperor Napoleon III still haunts the basement. Room 333 is said to be the most haunted of them all, with many a spectre wanting a sleepover. The most famous ghost, inclusive to room 333, is a man in Victorian dress who likes to watch people sleeping. Whether or not it's he who shakes the bed violently at night, we don't know. Damn, I forgot to tell you about the ghost with the gaping wound on its face. Next time. Coming into number two, we have the stay on Main. There are 16 very good reasons not to stay at this cursed hotel in Los Angeles. Oh, and also don't let the new name fool you. This is the legendary cursed Cecil Hotel, most recently in the news because of the disappearance of Alyssa Lamb in 2013. The Canadian tourist was found dead in the hotel's water tank surrounded by her belongings after going missing for three weeks. CCTV footage was released of her acting very strangely in an elevator before her mysterious and to this day unsolved death. It literally looks like she's pleading with someone invisible, which freaks me out. Before her death, the hotel was already wrapped up in 16 other grisly untimely deaths. It's actually thought that the Black Dahlia, a murdered rising Hollywood star, stayed at the hotel before her death. Oh, and it was also said to be the home of serial killers Richard Ramirez and Jack Unterwerger. I feel like it just needs to be knocked down and the grounds cleansed with holy water or something. Finally, coming into number one, you've all heard of Egyptian curses, but we're a little far from Egypt here. We've got the Luxor Hotel. Las Vegas is a place for tortured souls, so it's kind of understandable that so many hotels on the strip are reported to be haunted. I could legitimately make a whole top 10 list about hotels not to stay at in Vegas, but for this list, I'm just keeping it to the one. Luxor Hotel is an Egyptian themed hotel, but it may have angered the old gods. Many people think that it's cursed. Why? Well, attention to detail was actually lacking when the hotel was built. The Sphinx in the hotel is facing east rather than west and the building of the pyramid doesn't have the required eye on the top, which is just utter disrespect, right? The Luxor has had very consistently high death rates over the years since it opened in 1993 and a string of misfortune that's also surrounded it. Some people say that seven people died whilst building the hotel. In 1996, a woman jumped from the 26th floor of the building and now haunts the lobby. Another man died while he drunkenly fell from the 10th floor. A hand bomb went off in the parking garage in 2007, killing an employee. In 2010, a UNLV football player dropped dead following a fight, and in 2012, a casino employee was murdered by her boyfriend once again in the lobby. 2012 was also a bad year for the hotel's rep as three guests caught Legionnaire's disease, with a further case reported in 2017. One of the guests even died as a result. 
guests have spotted ghost riders in the boats along the replica River Nile. And in case that wasn't enough, it is thought that the Titanic exhibition at the hotel also invited ghosts from the cruise ship disaster too. Whew, I don't know how many I counted there, but like, that is a lot. And I think ultimately the lesson to be learnt here is don't face your sphinx the wrong way because, I don't know, the gods will come for you. Probably. Kicking off the countdown at the number 10, we have the room at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. The Glamorous Hotel opened in 1927, right at the center of Hollywood, and has a long history of celebrities staying there. It is often used for movie premiere after parties and even hosted the very first Oscars. It's a huge spot for tourists, but one room in particular is known to be haunted Room 1200. People have reported seeing the legendary star Marilyn Monroe walk through the halls of that room. Well, the halls, the room, you know, the whole living situation. She was staying there during her rise to fame. It's been said that she shot her first ever ad at the Roosevelt Pool, and she still hangs around the pool to this day. Many guests said they have seen her in the room's mirror, and maintenance workers said they've seen her blue dress moving through the halls. If you're gonna be haunted by a ghost, it might as well be Marilyn Monroe, am I right? Up next at number nine is the Red Lion Inn, located in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. The inn has been around since 1773, and throughout the years it has been a favorite spot for paranormal investigators and mediums. The hotel is filled with a haunting past and reports say that the fourth floor has a lot of sightings. The ghost of a young girl carrying flowers and a man with a top hat are the two most frequent sightings, but one room in particular has the most activity. It's on the third floor and it's room 301. A guest reported that they woke up feeling like someone was standing over their bed and heard unexplained knocks and voices throughout their stay. Sniping the number 8 spot on our countdown is the Queen Anne in San Francisco. The now hotel was once a school for girls back in 1890, run by the headmistress named Miss Mary Lay. Over the years, the school converted to a hotel, and it's been said that Miss Mary Lake will look after the guests who stay in her former office, room 410. She's not a ghost that will terrorize people like in horror movies. She looks after her guests, like she once did with her students many generations ago. Guests have reported that their clothes were unpacked when they came back to the rooms, and they woke up in the middle of the night to find out that their blankets had been neatly tucked underneath them. I can't tell if this is creepy or comforting. I kind of like the idea of a ghost nanny who just like takes care of you. Like, creepy nanny, please tuck me. In. I don't know why I was Italian for that. Cruising into the number seven spot is the Omni Groove Park in Asheville, North Carolina. Back in the 1920s, news broke that a woman either jumped or got pushed to her death from the fifth floor balcony. A century later, employees and guests say that the room she was in, room 545, is still haunted by her presence. Her case was never solved, which might be part of the reason why she still makes herself known. They refer to her as the lady in pink because she is often seen in a pink dress or leaves behind a pink mist. Apparently, young children are the ones who spot her the most, so if you really want to catch a glimpse of her, grab your kids and make them do the work. Be like, hey Johnny, find this ghost for me. Yeah, ghost kid finding kid. Put them on a leash like they're a ghost town and they just like crawl around like <laughs> is, that, is that the noise that kids make? I don't know. I don't know what noise kids kids make. In at the number six is the Malaga Inn located in Mobile, Alabama. It's considered one of the most haunted hotels in Alabama and still has the boutique style that it did when it was built in 1862. The property is historic in the deep south and is still a memory of the Civil War era. It has 39 rooms, Victorian furnishings, and decor, and a beautiful outdoor courtyard. When it was built, the two townhouses were constructed by two in-laws as wedding gifts for their two sisters in the family. Guests claim that the sisters never left the home, and that they often spot a ghostly lady figure in a white dress in room 007. She was recently spotted pacing on the balcony. Other guest reports say that their lights turn on and off by themselves, furniture moves on its own, and even a swinging chandelier. The only time a swinging chandelier is cool is when you're swinging from it with a bottle of champagne in one hand you're like popping it and blowing it at everyone you're like I'm rich you can do whatever I want that's when it's cool. We're halfway through at number five, and we have La Posada, which is located in Santa Fe. It's known for being a hotel now, but before it was renovated, it was actually the home of a German lady named Julia Stab. The mansion was built for her by her husband in 1882, and after her eighth child died shortly after birth, she fell into a deep depression. Reports say she hid in her room, was never seen in the flesh again after 1896, her death becoming a huge mystery. So now that it's a hotel, guests have said they've seen her staying in room 100, which was her former bedroom. It could be a haunting experience if you decide to stay there. It's been said that Julia used to love baths and guests staying in room 100 would hear running water in the middle of the night and their water would turn on and off on its own. All right guys, we're at number four with the Concord's Colonial Inn. If you walk down the hallways of this hotel, you might feel a chill running up your spine because it's known for being historically haunted by its past. It was built in Concord, Massachusetts back in the Revolutionary War. One of the rooms in the hotel is known for being haunted, room 24, because it was used as an operation room for wounded soldiers back 
back in the 1770s. Caretakers operated on the wounded soldiers and many of them didn't survive and passed away in that very room. Many guests have dared to spend the night there and they say they see floating orbs, hear haunting voices and even saw the ghost of a nurse walking around the room. Would you guys like to stay in this room? Ah, uh, For me that's a no. In our third spot is the Battery Carriage Inn. The hotel in Charleston, South Carolina is known for being the most romantic bed and breakfast but also the most haunted. How do those two blend together? I'm not exactly sure. The hotel is said to have been haunted for many years and the website openly brags about it. Apparently there are three rooms in the hotel that are haunted. Room 3, Room 8 and Room 10. Room 10 is known for a headless torso. Room 3 has a variety of different ghost sightings and Room 8 always has a man apparition. The hotel was built in the 1840s and still lives on as one of the most popular tourist spots to this day. Taking over the number 2 spot is the Crescent Hotel and Spa. The Arkansas Hotel has been given the title for being America's most haunted hotel with claims that it has a portal to the other side. If you know what I mean. I mean it opens up a door to the dead. Over the years many guests have reported ghost sightings and paranormal activity. A fact that is known by the two owners who bought it back in 1997. They ended up hiring certified mediums to do a reading on the building and they found out that the hotel was a portal to the other side. A dimension that holds the spirits of the dead. But why this hotel? Because it was once a hospital back in 1937 when a doctor named Norman Baker treated cancer patients despite his lack of training. As a result many of the people died and apparently you can stay in the room that was once a morgue if you want to have the worst night of your life. Starting off this countdown we have room 333. The Langham Hotel is said to be one of the most haunted hotels in London as it is haunted by more than 5 ghosts. The most active ghost is said to be that of a German prince. It's believed that he threw himself out of a window on an upper story room and passed away. Guests have seen his ghost on a number of occasions. He is known to move through walls and close doors. If you feel a sudden drop in ten if you feel a sudden drop in temperature, it's said that's a sign that he is near. You also have the ghost of a man with a gaping wound on his face. But the most haunted area in the whole hotel is room 333. People who have stayed in this room have encountered a number of terrifying ghosts. The first sighting was made by a BBC newscaster. He was staying in the room when he woke up to see a fluorescent ball of light floating above him, which slowly transformed into a human figure. The apparition hovered in his room and he was dressed in Victorian evening wear but one of his legs was missing. He came towards the newscaster with his arms open and eyes wide before disappearing into thin air. Another ghost that haunts this room is the ghost of a doctor who took the life of his wife on their honeymoon. This guy often appears wearing a cloak and often has blank staring eyes. And lastly we have Emperor Napoleon III. Apparently he lived at the Langham during his last days in exile. And he's also made an appearance in room 333. In our ninth spot we have the Hay Adams. Located in Washington DC this hotel is said to be the most famous hotel in the capital. That's because a number of big hotshots have stayed there like Obama. But the hotel has a pretty haunting past. In 1884 John Hay who was President Abraham Lincoln's private secretary and Henry Adams built their homes on the plot of land where the hotel was built upon. In 1885 Adams wife Marion Hooper Adams ended up taking her life there. She had been battling a case of serious depression triggered by the death of her father 10 months earlier. In 1927 after Adams passed away the houses were destroyed and replaced with the hotel. But it didn't matter because Marion's soul is attached to the land that she died on so she now haunts the hotel. Guests and staff members have frequently reported hearing the sounds of someone crying. They believe that it is Marion weeping over her heartbreak and loss of father. In our 8th spot we have the Bali Gali Castle and I just absolutely love the name of this place so I had to put it on today's list. Like Bali Gali, Bali Gali, I don't care, it's funny. Anyways, this was a castle built in 1625 Ireland. Now it has been transformed into a hotel. Turns out that years ago the original owners Lord James Shaw and his wife Lady Isabella lived in the castle. That was until Isabella's death. 
She either fell, jumped, or was pushed to her death from the top of the castle. To this day, her ghost still haunts her old home. She has been seen wandering around the castle, knocking on doors, and on multiple occasions can be heard weeping from her tower. Moving on to number 7, we have room 873. Located in the luxury mountain resort Banff Springs Hotel, room 873 is so haunted that they had to permanently seal it up, hoping that it would seal away the evil with it. According to a number of legends, decades ago a family was killed in room 873. In 1928, a married couple and their daughter checked into the hotel, but they never checked out. During one night, the father ended up taking the lives of his wife and daughter before taking his own life. No one knows why he did this. Soon after, the room was refurbished and booked out to visitors. But weird things started happening in that room. Guests would wake up in the middle of the night to sounds of screaming in their room. When they would flip on the lights, they would see bloody handprints on the mirror inside the room. Obviously, they would freak the hell out and run to the front desk, but when the staff went to the room to investigate the prints, they would be gone. It was happening so frequently that they decided to board up the room. In fact, if you go to the hotel today, there are rooms ending in 7-3 on each floor, except on the 8th floor. In the spot where it should be, you can tell that a room has been boarded up. In our 6th spot today, we have Lizzie Borden House. Turns out that the infamous Lizzie Borden House, where she allegedly killed her parents, is now a fun little bed and breakfast. But a haunted fun little bed and breakfast. So story goes that back in 1892, both of Lizzie's parents were found dead. After investigating the scene, Lizzie was the only person who seemed guilty, so she was blamed for their murder. While staying there, guests have reported seeing doors open and close on their own. Also, late at night, apparently Lizzie can be heard laughing at the top of the stairs. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Omni Grove Park Inn. Back in the 1920s while staying at the Omni Grove Park Inn in North Carolina, a young woman was either pushed or jumped to her death from her hotel room 545. To this day, her presence still wanders the walls of the hotel. Some guests have felt her presence, others have seen a strange pink mist form around them, and some have actually seen this ghostly woman herself. She appears in a flowy pink gown, hence why people just call her the pink lady. The people most sensitive to seeing her are young children. A number of children have seen her and been like, mommy, who's that lady in the pink dress? Meanwhile, no one's there. How freaky. Coming in at number 4, we have the Ostasaga Resort. Located in New York, this resort has quite the fair share of history. When it was first erected, it was actually a school for girls, and to this day, these little girlies still haunt the area. Apparently, while on the third floor hallway, you'll be able to hear a bunch of them giggling and whispering. In fact, Sci-Fi's Ghost Hunters went to investigate this place a couple years ago, and when doing so, they captured the presence of a bunch of shadowy figures, ghostly whisperings, and other paranormal activity. If you want to check out the place today, go to the second, third, and fifth floors. That's where all the spooky stuff is said to happen. In our third spot today, we have La Posada de Santa Fe. This resort and spa hotel is anything but relaxing. Turns out that it is haunted by a German woman named Julia Stab. Oh my god, her last name is Stab. It's probably like Stab. It definitely is because it's German, but anyway, it makes it spookier. Before it was a resort, it was her mansion. It was built by her husband in 1882. A couple of years later, Julia fell into a really bad depression. Her eighth child ended up passing away shortly after birth, and so Julia locked herself in her room. She didn't leave her room until 1896. When she passed away, her soul latched onto the house. To this day, she still wanders around the halls. Most frequently, she will appear in Suite 100. It's now a guest suite, but it used to be her bedroom. In fact, Julia loved to take baths, so people staying in the suite often hear the water running in the middle of the night. Moving on to number 2, we have the Fairmount Royal York Hotel. Turns out that there's a haunted hotel in my hometown and I didn't even know it. Toronto's Royal York Hotel is nearly 100 years old. Construction of it finished in 1929, and over the years a number of members of royalty, celebrities, and millionaires, and ghosts have stayed at this hotel. Seems to be a nice luxury hotel, minus the fact that it's completely haunted. One famous ghost is the man dressed in a purple coat that wanders around the 8th floor. 
There's also ghosts of children haunting the halls. One guest told the concierge that they heard children running up and down the halls on the first night that they checked in, but they saw no children. When they looked through the peephole the next night, they saw a grey haired man with a purple waistcoat. They initially thought that it was a hotel staff member, but when they opened the door, the man disappeared into thin air. The hotel also has a crystal ballroom that is also haunted. Guests frequently hear noises and music within the ballroom, even after it's been closed. And in our number one spot today, we have room B340. Queen Mary Hotel is said to be one of the most haunted hotels in America. There are a number of ghosts that haunt this hotel, from Jackie, the little girl who haunts the first class pool, to a man named John Petter who was crushed by a watertight door, to second senior officer William Eric Stark who accidentally drank cleaning fluid instead of gin and one of the cooks who was baked alive by his own staff during World War II. So yeah, a lot of dark things have happened on this ship turned hotel. Now there is one room that you never ever want to visit and that's room B340. It's the site of a huge tragedy. So back in the 60s, the ship was used for transatlantic cruises. Well, while on this cruise, a man went crazy and took the lives of two women in this room. When his crimes were discovered, he was locked in the room until they could dock the ship and deal with him. The door was locked from the outside and a guard was positioned outside the room so the killer couldn't escape. At one point, the guard heard the man pounding on the door saying that someone was in the room with him and was trying to kill him. Obviously, the guard was like, I ain't no idiot, I'm not falling for that, so he never opened the door. He thought this guy was just trying to get him to open the door so he could escape. Here's where it gets weird. Shortly after, the guard heard nothing coming from the room, so he thought the man finally settled down and went to bed. The next day, the ship arrived in New York and the NYPD boarded the ship to arrest this man. But when he opened the door, they found the man's body parts scattered across the room. His limbs had been ripped off and were all over the place. There's no way that he could have done this to himself. So what happened in there? Was there actually someone in that room with him? If so, how did they get in and then out? A number of guests who have stayed in that room have reported eerie things happening to them in the middle of the night, like flickering lights, knocking, apparitions, and the water turning on and off by itself. Starting off this countdown, we have the snakes. Imagine laying in bed and all of a sudden feeling something scaly slithering up your leg. Again, I wish I was joking. But finding a snake in hotels or hotel rooms is actually quite common in warm places, especially Florida. Snakes have been known to wander into resorts and then slither into guest bags or find their way upstairs. Nothing is worse than going to unpack and finding a snake in your bag. Actually, I lied. What's worse is waking up to a snake in your bed beside you. That happened to one guest in Florida. The snake somehow got into her room and then got into her bed while she was asleep. Thankfully, the snake wasn't poisonous. But still, no one wants things like that to happen to them. Coming in at number 9, we have the dirty movies. So at some hotels, you have limited TV channels. But one thing that you will always have is the adult movie section. Now, none of those are provided for free. So if you wish to watch an explicit movie, you'll have to pay for it. And you may think that it's just your dirty little secret. But no, it's not. The hotel staff know who orders what and when. So they know exactly what you're doing upstairs in your room. Awkward. Moving on at number eight, we have the crimes. So if you're staying at a hotel, you might think you're completely safe. I mean, you're in a locked room, the hotel is monitored by security, and they have a bunch of cameras monitoring the hallways. But are you really safe? Well, a study revealed that robbery and assault are pretty common crimes that take place in hotels. People that are traveling often have a large sum of cash on them, making them easy targets. In fact, there have been a number of cases of people wandering into hotels and then breaking into hotel rooms and robbing the place. According to the Seattle Times, a statement released by police officials states, and I quote, more and more guests are being physically threatened in or near their rooms, or worse, attacked or killed. That's super scary to think about. That's the last thing you want to think about while being on your vacation. 
In our 7th spot we have the bargain hunters. When you go on vacation you want the best deals possible. You want to spend the least amount of money but still want an amazing experience. As a result, you may use third party websites to get a hotel room at a discounted price. Hotel Trivago. But maybe this isn't the best idea. You may save money on the room, but you'll pay later on in other ways. A number of hotels revealed that those that book through third party sites may not get a 5 star experience. Since those guests are paying less, they are often given the crappiest rooms in the hotel, they may not get fresh towels every day, and maids probably won't do a deep clean of your room. Well they don't anyway, but still. Why? Well, they are making less money on those stays, so why would they put the time of day into those guests? They are more committed to pleasing the loyal customers. In our 6th spot we have the personal items. Former hotel staffs have warned guests to never leave any of their personal hygiene items out, like beauty products or their toothbrush. They shared stories of times where annoyed housekeepers would use guests toothbrushes to clean the toilets. Ok, now I have trust issues. I swear I'd rather camp outside than stay in a hotel room now. Another employee admitted on the whisper app that they frequently use guests stuff. Basically this app is a way to confess your secrets anonymously. And the hotel industry had a lot to say. So she admitted that she would test out guests hair products or skin products. So now it said to never leave any personal items out on display. It's safer to keep them in your bag when you know housekeeping is going to be in your room. We are now at our 5th and halfway mark with the thieves. Maybe you're staying at a really nice hotel with soft comfy robes and plush towels and you think to yourself, huh, they won't notice if I take a couple of things. Chances are they will notice. Some hotels have started using radio frequency identification technology to prevent theft. Basically hotels have embedded small chips into certain items to track them. These items are embedded into towels, robes and linen to prevent them from being stolen. And they are alerted once the item leaves the property. So they will know if you're stealing from them. I mean putting trackers and towels does seem extra, but hotels lose thousands of dollars every year just from stolen items. So think twice before you nab a couple of towels to take home as a souvenir. In our fourth spot we have the mini bar. One of the things that was drilled into my head as a kid is to never take anything from the hotel's mini bar. For starters, they're so expensive, like who's trying to pay $20 for a mini bottle of Fiji water? Not me. Because of the high prices, some guests will try to be sneaky. Hotel staff have revealed that some guests will take the drinks and then to avoid paying for them will refill the bottles with water or even urine. Yeah, that happens more often than you think. The hotel staff recommend that you check the seals on all bottles in the mini fridge so you don't get charged for another guest's fun. Moving on to number 3 we have the ice bucket. Since you're staying in a room where thousands of others have stayed before you, you gotta be careful. Who knows what those guests were doing in the room before you got there. Hotel staff have found vomit, urine and feces in ice buckets and coffee makers before. I know, it's disgusting. So either avoid those items completely or scrub the crap out of them, literally, before you decide to use them. In our second spot we have the room service. Room service is super convenient. Maybe you just had a long flight and are jet lagged and you just want to stay in bed all day. With a click of a button you can have meals delivered right to your door. But this secret reveals the reason why you shouldn't order room service. So again this secret was exposed on the app whisper. One hotel worker admitted that at her work, none of the workers ever buy lunch. Instead whenever someone orders food to their room, they all just carefully pick at the meal before sending it up. Yeah, so whenever you get a fresh meal, it may just be that multiple people have been digging their fingers into it before you. Another worker at a different hotel revealed that if a guest isn't the nicest to them, then they will spit or tamper with their food before sending it up. Messing around with another man's food is no joking matter. 
Not cool guys, not cool. And in our number one spot, we have the Hotel Room Corpse. So around 1991, there was a famous urban legend about a couple vacationing in Las Vegas who found a dead body under their hotel bed. Well, turns out that this has happened to multiple people across the world. All of these individuals started to notice a weird odor emerging from under their bed. When they inspected, they found a dead body. In 1999, a couple was vacationing in Atlantic City when they discovered they were sleeping on a mattress that contained a body. In 2010, a couple in Memphis found the body of a missing person, Sunny Millbrook, under their bed. They also found fabric softener sheets shoved in the ceiling tiles to try and hide the smell. Gross. I mean, it's already weird sleeping on a mattress that thousands of others have slept on, but sleeping over a dead body? That's disgusting. Maybe you should always inspect your hotel rooms before you decide to spend the night there. <laughs>